Kalietti Champs, and yes, the MacBook Pro 16 is coming out this year. The new version has to 100%, and we're going to talk about that. We're going to get really deep into it. And by the way, I have a 6900 XT, and we're going to test that on Macs, how it goes. Obviously, it doesn't work on M1 Macs, but we're going to see how it works with Intel Macs. Of course, it should work. I don't know 100%, but we'll find out. So let's talk about the MacBook Pro 16. There have been rumors of two versions this year, an Intel version, and then later on in the year, mid-year, possibly end of the year. And there's some really important points about this MacBook Pro 16 that you need to know about, that you want to know about, because it's just a little bit more complicated than saying we're going to have an M1X or an M2 or a whatever. At least we do have the M1s to gauge what we should expect. But a little warning, we're going to get a bit esoteric and we're going to get right into the minutiae of the this MacBook Pro 16. So when it comes to the Intel version, that is super simple, right? It's going to have, I doubt they're going to put 10th generation CPUs. It's going to be the exact same design, everything exactly the same. I think they're going to have 11th gen CPUs, Wi-Fi 6, I would not bank on it, and AMD's 6000 series graphics. So graphics based on RDNA 2's 6000 series graphics. Now with the 11th gen CPUs, we're getting, you know, 20% IPC gains, should be more power efficient. It's going to be a beat of an actual unit you might be thinking intel amd it's in the past yeah i sort of agree i'll probably myself will wait for the apple silicon versions but if you're a pro and like say for example use pro tools or say avid media composer or baselight or something that hasn't really been updated and optimized for m1 max a lot of studios and stuff they just want stuff that works right they'll get the intel max and they'll get the latest and greatest intel the fastest ones they should be good computers but one thing's for sure right Right. MacBook Pro 16s are expensive and the MacBook Pro is one of my favorite laptops actually my favorite laptops now are M1 MacBook Air MacBook Pro 16 and XPS 15 really loving that M1 MacBook Air but anyway one thing about the MacBook Pro 16 as I said before very expensive and that's because Apple have to pay Intel Apple have to pay AMD for their expensive parts and if you think about a $3,000 MacBook Pro a thousand dollars is probably bill of materials just for those two components the AMD and Intel CPU. That's just bill of materials, right? That's not everything else on top of that. So here's the thing, right? When it comes to the Apple Silicon version of the MacBook Pro 16, which should be middle of this year, did I say next year? The middle of this year, end of this year. Whether they're going to have a redesign, that may be at the end of the year. Maybe they're just going to put, you know, Apple Silicon in the current design mid-year. And of course, it's going to be based on the A14. Same sort of silicon we got in the M1s. Now, if it's going to be an M2 based on the A15, you know, Apple Silicon, that won't be to the end of the year. But if it's based on the M1, based on the A14 and called M1X, or maybe it might be called M2, who knows, or M1Z or Z, doesn't really matter. What we know is it's going to have more performance cores, right? So we have currently four performance cores. Rumors are we're going to double that to eight. Some say we're going to have 12. It really doesn't matter. What really matters, and this is what I was talking about, important things to know. What really matters is, are we getting a TDP bump? Or are we just going to be adding more cores to the same power envelope? And now, as you know, with Intel, you know, we've gone from two to four cores, four cores to eight cores, all in the same sort of whatever package, 45 watt package. So in 2015, they were quad cores. 2019, I think it was, we went to eight cores, same 45 watt part. Now, what are Apple going to do here? Say they give us eight cores. Is it the same TDB? Which means the performance gain wouldn't be doubled. You would think going from four cores to eight cores, yeah, double the performance or near enough. Of course, there's overheads involved. But if it's the same TDP, you're probably only going to get around that sort of 40% performance boost. That goes with the GPU as well. We added more cores to the GPU. Is it the same TDP? If they add 16 GPU cores, same TDP, expect 40%, not sort of 80%. So there's the salient point here. What are they doing? I hope they increase the TDP. So they go from this 10 watt and an Antec set, they probably boost up to, you know, 20 something watts. So up to around 20, 23 watts they actually use. That's the Mac Mini, of course. I hope they boost it up. So maybe it has a 15 watt starting TDP versus 10 watts on the MacBook Air, or maybe it's 20 watts. Let's crank it right up, right? 
and maybe it boosts from you know 20 watts to 30 watts or 35 watts apple can do this then we'll see the big performance gains because you're getting more cores but you're getting more power just adding more cores to the same tdp especially if it's exactly the same architecture you don't get that big performance leak you expect now some people won't want that because they don't want the fans right but that's the super interesting thing to me about the macbook pro 16 are they going to do that not only that if you have a look at the m1 max it looks like they've just glued on the memory and that's as much a technical term as it is literal it's not really literal so what i mean by that is the actual memory is built into the package it's not actually built into the chip so it's not true hbm now apple do say it is hbm memory but it's actually outside the chip it's actually sort of like glued onto the package there it doesn't look very elegant for a start but because we're saving so much money with these macbook bros not having to pay intel not having to pay amd maybe they go to full hbm now they wouldn't do this on the macbook air or you know base model pro it's too expensive but if they keep the macbook pro 16 at the same sort of expensive price we can add hbm on the expense won't matter because they're saving so much money not using intel and amd so hopefully that's a thing of course we need more memory so 32 if it is real hbm i doubt they're going to go to 64 that's just wow that's just nuts there's also one other consideration with the MacBook Pro 16 is the displays. Now, rumoured mini LED at the end of the year. Now, whether that passes quality control, the mini LED for Apple's quality control, or they can actually mass produce them in sufficient quantity that Apple want, we'll have to wait and see in that regard. I do believe it's going to be a HDR display, 1000 nit peak brightness, because we do need HDR displays because people are starting to do HDR videos. I do them now, not all the time. A lot of people complain because it can look blown out if you're not looking at it on a HDR display. But more important to me than that is we have a 99 watt hour battery in the MacBook Pro 16. The battery life is going to be amazing with Apple Silicon, or is it? Because one of the reasons we never got you know full high resolution displays on MacBook Pro 16s and 15s is because Apple want that sort of 10 hour battery life. Now they have Apple Silicon. The MacBook Pro 16 used to have the best battery life out of any Apple product, other than the phones I think, but it certainly had the best battery life of any of the Mac laptops until the M1s, right? So if it had the same display it has now on the MacBook Pro 16, you can imagine the battery life is going to be like over 20 hours. It's just going to be out of this world. But here's the thing. Now Apple don't have to make a compromise on the resolution of the display because now they can put a 4K display. Now they can put a 5K display and they will still have probably better battery life than you do get on the current MacBook Pro 16 now. Or maybe they leave it the same resolution it is now and you get that extra battery life. So Apple are going to have to make a decision now. Which one would you want? Would you want the higher resolution display, less battery life, but still probably more than the current MacBook Pro 16? Or would you like the same resolution display you have on the MacBook Pro 16 now and just like 20 hours battery life? Because that's the decision Apple have to make. And we don't know how power efficient these mini LED displays are. I'm probably thinking they're not very power efficient especially on the first generation but anyway there are things to mull over here i cannot wait for the macbook pro 16 to come out intel version or the apple silicon version it's going to be awesome stay tuned to this channel make sure you subscribe because i'll have loads of content on it of course i'll catch you in the next one guys tally ho